Hello, you guys. How is seventh grade doing? Hopefully well. Um, we will start today's lesson with our prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we pray together, teach me, God, to add love and mercy towards others, to subtract sin and anxiety from my life to multiply the fruits of the Holy Spirit, and to divide our differences as I share with others acts of mercy today. We um, pause right here and I ask you to um, pray for something that you'd like us all to pray for. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray, too, for all of our fathers here or in heaven or wherever they may be. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Since this is St. Joseph's Day, we ask that. Okay, so St. Joseph, pray for us. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. All right, um, here we go. I just want to take this time to say, uh, before we do anything else, you guys are doing a great job. Thank you for asking questions. Eighth grade never asks questions. Sixth and seventh, you're so good at it. Thank you. Um, so continue to ask questions. I will try to get to them in a timely manner. Um, thank you to those of you who step up. Uh, a number of you have stepped up and said, "No, I. This is the. You know, this is what's going on there." So I appreciate that. Um, I will continue to make mistakes, no doubt. But hopefully, you guys will help me out, and we'll all try to do our best together. So today we're adding a little bit more on to our measures of central tendency, which would be mean, median, and mode. And then we know that range is not part of central tendency, but it does give us a very interesting look at things. Um, today we are adding outliers. Now this is not an actual part of central tendency, but it affects some things, especially range, greatly. So um, make sure you've written 8-3 interpret data in your notebooks and in your table of contents. Um, and then an outlier. So an outlier is um, oh, it's a, a number in your data set. And it can be either of these. That is much greater or much less than the other numbers. Yikes. Okay. Uh, and that's important because um, it can, if it's much greater or much less, it can actually skew your data set a lot. So let's say um, I was trying to find out how effective um, some my teaching was, like did you understand it? Let's say everyone got A's and B's and then I had um, somebody that got like a 4%. That is going to make my data, so let's look at that. Like let's say I had like a 92, a 95, a 96, an 85, and a 4%. Let's add those up. 7 and 6 is 13, and 9 would be 22. That's 29. Um, 37. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to divide that by 5. So 5 into 37 would be 7. Uh, with 2 left over, that would be about 4. Okay. So what that would tell me is if I was just looking at the mean, I'd say, man, my, I, the whole class, the, the average of my class is 74%. I must have really done something wrong because so many people got low grades. Mm, not so. I have all really high grades and then a 4%. So you can see how that really skewed my data. This is going to be important when we're analyzing data to know, is there an outlier? Is there something that was way low or way high? Um, so if I were to do this again and throw out my outlier, <coughs> excuse me, um, 5 and 2 7 plus 6 is 13. 
um, 18, so that's 19 and 17, 33. Divide that by 4. That gives me um, 4 and 18 is 34. 5 and 84. All right. What did I do wrong? Something there. 10, 19. 19 plus 9 is 28. 36. Okay. Ah, that looks better. Okay, that goes in. There we go. 92. Okay, so my average here is 92. That seems like it matches the data set, right? 96, 95, 92, 85. That seems like it matches. And now I'm like, okay, that falls within a good range. Um, even if it was a B, it would be a good range, right? If I had lots more scores. Um, but this just doesn't seem like it was representative of that data. So it's important to know about outliers. And for this very reason, we're going to be finding measures of central tendency with the outliers and without the outliers. And then that's going to really tell us what's going on. Okay, so let's do an example. Um, let's do, let's say my data set is, um, we're going to do two of these, okay? 11, 13, 8, 104, 16, and 10. Okay. Hmm. First of all, can you identify the outlier in this situation? Pretty easy, right? 104. So, if I were to ask you for the outlier, it would be 104, okay? Um, now, let's find the mean with my outlier, with the outlier, okay? So, if I add all of those up, I'm going to get um, 58, and I've got one, two, three... Nope, that was without my outlier. Sorry. Let's see. With my outlier, it's 162. There we go. That sounds better. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six of them. So if I divide 162 by 6, I get 27. Okay. Um, the mean without the outlier is 27. Well, look at all these numbers. None of them even come close to 27. Does that seem representative of the data? It really does not. Um, so now I'm going to try my mean without, without the outlier. So today when you're doing this, you're going to have to really read well. Does it say outlier with outlier or without outlier? Eek. Um, okay, so now I add them up without the 104. And what I find is I get 58. There are five of them, right? One, two, three, four, five without the outlier. That is 11.6. And you're going to want to write, don't round, okay? Just write what you get, 11.6. Uh, now let's look at my numbers, 11, 13, 8, 16, 10. 11.6 seems like it's, it's a representative of those without that 104, okay? What about our median? So my median with the outlier means I'm going to include it. So I've got to rearrange those in order. So that would be 8, 10, 11, 13, 16, and 104. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. My median, so I'm going to look in between. Uh, twos. So it would be 11 and 13. So what do I have to do if I have two things? I'll have to add them and take their average. I get 24. 2 into 24 is 12. Okay. Let's look at the median without the outlier. So this time I'm going to get rid of that 104. Um, there, there, there. 
my median without, the one that's in the middle without, since it's an odd number now. Gosh, I have to go buy more exponent markers. Uh, 11, okay, a little different, not a lot different though, right? Would you say the median is greatly affected by an outlier? Probably not. It's just, it's not measuring differences and stuff. Okay, what about the mode? Do I have a mode here? Well, I don't see anything repeated. No mode. Um, what about, and that doesn't seem to matter if I have an outlier or not, right? I don't, I don't see anything repeated there. Okay, now let's look at the range. Range with the outlier and the range without the outlier. Without the outlier. Okay, so range, remember, I am doing, so I'm gonna do with it. Um, that's the lowest and the highest, the difference between them. Yesterday, a lot of you, when we had negative numbers, messes with your mind. Get your biggest one, so this one was 104, and you subtract the smallest one. Yesterday, you forgot it's minus a negative, which becomes positive. So I'm actually adding it on there. It's kind of a, it does mess with your mind a little bit there. All right, 14 minus 8 is, uh, so the whole thing is 96. So range without, with my outlier is 96. Pretty big range, right? The difference between 8 and 104. All right. Let's look without the outlier. So now I'm I'm get rid of that, and my highest number looks like it's 16. So 16 minus 8 is 8. So my range without the outlier is 8. Wow, huge difference. So is the range affected by this? Oh, it sure is. Okay. So you can see that's really affected, and the mean is is um, really affected by that. All right, so those two are going to be the um, what is affected most. Um, I'm trying to see if we have any negatives today. Yes, we do. So I'm just going to make up my own data set, and we're going to go through some negatives. I'm just going to erase this, but leave all of the data sets on there. Okay. Would you please make sure that um, you have paused and written all of this in there? I really want these in there. Let's, um, I have no idea if these are going to be right or wrong, so I'm just making them up. How about we do negative 5, negative 16, um, negative 79. Um, let's do um, negative two, negative eight, negative, sorry, negative eight, negative 16. Good enough for me. All right. So do I have an outlier? Remember, an outlier is a number in your data set that is much greater. That's what we did last time. Or much less than the others. Do you have an outlier here? We sure do. It is negative 679. That one is much different than the other numbers, okay? So let's find our mean with the outlier. So I'm going to add all these together. Um, so I've got negative 5, negative. And probably I'm just going to write these 16, 79, 2, Eight, make sure you line these up right. Wouldn't you agree? You don't want to add your five to the one or something. Okay, so five plus six is 11, plus nine is 20, 36. Oh, thank you. I don't know how I ended up doing that easily. Three plus seven is 10, 11, 12. So my answer is 126, all right? And I have um, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to divide by 6. 6 goes into negative um, 126, 21 times, negative 21. So my mean with my outlier is negative, with my outlier, yeah, 
is negative 21. Again, I look at these, none of these are even close to negative 21. I mean, negative 16 is getting a little closer, but it's big, it's smaller than all of those numbers. And so I'm thinking, hmm, that isn't very representative. Okay, what if I did this without my negative 79? So I would have negative 5, negative 16, negative 2, negative 8, and negative 16. 11 plus 10 is 21, 27, 2, 3, 4. So I would have negative 47. Okay, I'm going to divide that by this time. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I'll put 5 in there. That goes 9 times. Um, 5 times 9 is 45. So I'd have 2 left over. So that'd be 9.4. Okay, negative. Sorry. Negative 9.4. Now let's look at my numbers, negative 5, negative 16, negative 2, negative 8, negative 16. Negative 9.4 is right there in the mix, right? Right kind of in the middle, which is what my mean is supposed to be, not something that's way out there. What about my median? Well, let's take a look. I have to do this in order. So negative 79 is my smallest number, negative 16, negative 16. Negative 8, negative 5, negative 2. All right, let's count from the middle. 1, 2, 3. So it's going to be between negative 16 and negative 8. I'm going to add those together, which is negative 24. Divide it by 2, negative 12. All right, so the median with the outlier is negative 12. Okay. What if I don't have that outlier? What if I have negative 16 over here, then I would get negative 8. That's actually kind of a big difference in this particular case, isn't it? So this time it, it affected it. I mean, not a ton ton, but it did affect it this time. What about mode? What is the mode with the outlier? It looks like negative 16 to me. What's the mode without the outlier? negative 16. That's not going to change. Mode is never going to change unless you have two outliers, I guess. But other than that, it's not going to change. All right, what's my range with the outlier? Now, here's where I want to go over this with you guys. So the lowest number here is negative 79. And then I'm going to subtract my negative 2. Well, what's minus, you know, think about this going this way, minus a negative 2 plus 2, okay, um, so I'm going to get negative 77. So <clears throat> I can think about this. Now, I could have done negative 2 minus a negative 79, and that would give me a positive 77. Either of those answers really is okay. Um, what I, I always kind of want to go with a positive one because it shows me the distance in between. So the range, I have 77 numbers in between those. Okay, that's going to be my answer. So either one of those I will accept, but 77 is what we were really looking at because that shows how far apart they are. How far apart is it? What is, let's see, let's range is 77. What would my range be? And make sure you have this down so that you know. Um, what's my range without that outlier? Well, negative 16 and negative 2. So I'm going to subtract negative 2, which means I add it. It would be negative 14. So I'm just going to say positive 14. There are 14 numbers in between. Huge difference here. Okay, range once again is affected a lot by outliers. Um, so I'm going to just read this to you guys. We're not going to um, do much more with it, but I do want you to know um, that when we're doing this, it's called measures of variation or measures of dispersion. Of dispersion. Um, so if you were in a job um, that did something like this. Um, you might do spreadsheets looking at it. Um, and these are a really important thing. So if you're looking for clues in something, you're trying to find patterns, 
you often are going to get rid of that outlier because it's going to, you can see, it gives you very different data if you have outliers. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, this is all super real life stuff when we're doing um, this kind of data and this really helps us make good decisions. Look for outliers. Um, you know, when you're looking at your own grades and you're looking and you say, um, and I've, I've had people say, but I have a, a 95 and a 94 and, a, you know, and then that one zero and it really brings your grade down. That doesn't look right. No, because you got a zero. Or maybe I made a mistake. Instead of writing 94, I wrote four on one instead of uh, 94. So that would affect it. So um, this really helps you interpret data. It's all important stuff. All right, continue to ask questions. Um, I'm gonna, I, my goal is either this week or, or when we come back from spring break, if we're still, if we're still doing this, which I think we probably will be, um, then let's, um, then I'm gonna do some Google Hangouts with um, small groups of people so that we can talk and, and I can just check in with you and make sure that y'all are doing all right, okay? I hope you have a great day. Look at the lovely snow. It's all good. See you soon.